Hey everyone, it's Vickerman and we're here with Europa Universalis 4 with the new El Dorado expansion pack. One of the key features of this pack has been the custom nation designer. So it's uh, kind of cool. You can just pick a nation, a capital anywhere and grab extra provinces and change your national ideas around and change your rulers around. You can change all the cultures, religions, and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, the rest of this expansion focuses on kind of the South American kind of landscape there. Uh, but we won't be doing that too much. I've done some of that in the stream, uh, doing some playing around with the new Mayan and the Incan mechanics, but maybe we'll get there. Uh, so we, we've designed a custom nation here that I thought would be a nice counterbalance to England on the British Isles to potentially keep them from taking it over quite so easily so yeah could we does it allow us to do does not allow us to become Great Britain which is fine so I made a nation here that was basically Wales and Ireland joining together and it's called Celtica the nation of the Celts. So basically it has kind of a sort of a, a Welsh flag going on there in the corner. And that's our little fr flag here. So yeah, I think we're going to try to do some exploration. Maybe we'll get to South America at a reasonable time. But, you know, with Portugal and Castile having those nation, those uh, islands out there to start with, it's going to be kind of hard to, to make. We can do if we can't go to South America we'll try to get to North America now uh, the ideas for this custom nation are I think pretty darn powerful plus 20% global trade power which is massive and idea costs are down 20% which is another massive thing and the rest of this stuff is pretty pretty general stuff like uh, extra morale more taxes, better fort defense, more morale for navies, um, minus national unrest, dis discipline, and trade efficiency. So, that's kind of what's going on here. Our ruler's name is Riz Kadfael, which means enthusiasm uh, is his first name, and battle prince is the dynasty name. So the heir here is Angbarad. So this is an elective monarchy, so the heir isn't necessarily his son. So the first thing we ought to do is pick some rivals. Why is Scotland our enemy? They've rivaled us. That did that's not really good. I wanted to uh, to join forces with them against the English threat. Well, very well. So the rivals we can pick are Scotland, Provence, and Brittany, which I don't really have a problem with doing them all. Because got to get that power projection up. That's something that is new since I've played a lot. Um, and when you get 50 power projection, you get plus one to all your monarch points. That's huge. All right, we're running a 2.42 over budget. Now let's check out on trade. Trade is going to be one of our big things. So it looks like we are in the English Channel trade node. And we have someone transferring trade from both Champagne, Champagne and the North Sea. So we're sending some bubbly wine up here to the English Channel.
And sending some fish and things down here from the North Sea. We collect 1.52 in this trade node. Because England is just dominating that. I think we will keep things like that. Although in some sense we're helping out England a bit. Uh, well, maybe we don't want to, you know, fight England. Maybe they can be an ally. That's a weird thought. Since Scotland doesn't like me. Okay, claim our rival's province, Ayrshire. We can do that. Although maybe people relations, that gives me military power. So let's go ahead and fabricate a claim on Arshar. We can hire a military leader without upkeep. He's not great, but he'll do for the time being. We're not really going to get anyone great with uh, basically no. Without any. Uh, what you call it? Protect trade in. Uh, North Sea or the English Channel. Now, I think Protect Trade gives us more trade power. The fleet will add 23 trade power to English Channel. Increase our trade value from 1.52 to 3.18, while the fleet costs 0.57 in maintenance. Now, this will let us transfer more, but... I think we need to protect trade in London, or not not the London node, that's what it was before, they've changed it, the English Channel node. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing to do for the time being. Uh, we can't, well we probably could afford an advisor, but I don't think that's such a great idea. And we're, how are we doing on force limit? We have we can take three more on. Let's do two infantry. And one cavalry. Why is it not showing the number there? I guess because I'm in trade mode. Okay. So those ships are going to try to increase our trade power in the English Channel. I'm not sure that they have just yet. Okay, there we go. That really helps out a lot. Okay, Navy is going to be important as well. What else do we have? We've got four heavy ships. And one, two, three, four, five cogs. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and keep these heavies. A lot of times, folks will uh, get rid of them at the beginning of the game because they cost a lot in maintenance. But I think we're probably going to need them. So the Holy Roman Empire, same as usual. The Papacy, oh, this is totally different. 
spend five papal influence to gain 10 invested influence toward becoming the next papal controller. Levy church tax. Oh, gain legitimacy. That's nice. Uh, stability. Proclaim a holy war. Cost 25 influence. Uh, usury forgiven. Interest per annum minus one. Sanction commercial monopoly. And send papal legate. That gives you an advisor. Cool. Okay, so increasing our trade power should should have uh, helped us out there, I think. Okay, let's speed things up a bit. Okay, let's put our diplomats to work. And we really ought to see about getting in good with France. Because France is pretty darn powerful. And if England is uh, becomes a problem, well, France can usually help us out. And they're currently losing the 100 Years War England is. So, hmm. I wonder if they're thinking that this is kind of an aggressive stance here. Yeah, the English Navy is going to be a big problem. Uh, independence of Scotland is guaranteed by France. really use that alliance I need maybe two more ticks of uh, the month to get enough gold Oh yeah, the light ships seem to be helping trade out significantly as far as our income. Don't know if there's any way that France can blow up some of the navy there. But if they did, that would help out even more with trade dominance in this trade node. We could also set our heavies to piracy, I think. All right, we've finished that mission. Now they want us to take Ayrshire. That is not a great idea because of that guarantee that France is giving. So we won't do that. Let's solidify our people relations. So let's go to political and papal state. Let's go ahead. And, oh, we can ally the Pope. Oh, I don't think that's such a great idea. Would, uh, would Burgundy accept an alliance? No. France is very close. I 
guess we'll just wait for that relation boost to kick in. So we're doing okay for the beginning of the game, really. Yes, I know we have claims on provinces that we don't own. They don't have a core in my province, they just want them. Oh, nice. Free stability is always good. All right, let's uh, have these folks join the main trade fleet. Well, you can set it to go home at war. That's cool. Oh, you need light ships for privateering too. So what should my first idea group be? I'm thinking maybe we do trade or exploration, I think. Exploration would help get us over to the new world which will help with trade but all right the papal conclave has elected Julius the second he's loyal to England so now the new people controller okay France. You would accept an alliance now. We ought to offer it to you. Okay, they want to help. They want us to help in the Hundred Years' War. Looks like England is losing. All right, uh, <sighs> trade fleet. Ah, crap. Why don't you get down there? See if you can make it in time. Okay, France or somebody is helping me out. The Battle of the Straits of Dover. We sunk eight English ships. We lost one bark. That's acceptable, I think. Uh, so the barks ought to go home at war. Let's see if they do it. Good. So let's go ahead and attack this army. And I'm going to pull my ships over here. 
to blockade the province. That way it will help out with the sieges. Maybe we can help help France uh, put an end to England in this war once and for all. We'll do uh, we'll take a little bit of the spoils, I think. Any ships damaged? No. Okay, they're building up their forces. Uh, not too much yet. But maybe we ought to stop them before they get to be too good. We want to keep the numbers advantage. And they can muster a way bigger army than I could, so... We gotta keep ourselves in an advantageous situation. Well, France, they sure made a good choice by allying with us because we're doing pretty well. I say that, and then a gigantic English army. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Can you guys flee? No, 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 no. Is that the entire fleet gone? It sure is, man. Well, that's why you don't mess with the British Navy. Suppose I should siege here at the marches because they won't be affected by the no blockade thing. I wonder what our war score with England is. Well, it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to build more heavy ships because that ninja navy is just going to come out of nowhere and destroy them. So if we could somehow join forces with France and take that navy on, maybe things would go well, but... Because... Deal. I wonder if they'd be interested in an alliance as well. Yeah, I don't think we should be enemies, Scotland. Well, I think we'll end the episode here, but I uh, hope you'll join me for the next one in this series. It is going to be exciting, I can already tell, so we'll see you next time.